All right, I think we're going to kick things off. Um, so welcome everybody to this Better Business Workshop. We've got a fantastic uh, topic for you today. Um, we're going to be talking about getting to know the Urban Redevelopment Act. And we've got Ashley Drake with us um, to, to talk about that. And so uh, before we get started with just a little bit of background about this series uh, and introducing ourselves. So um, my name is Stan Odenthal. I am the Director of Business Relations at Heartland Workforce Solutions. And Jasmine, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jasmine Cabrera. I'm the Business Services Coordinator here at Heartland Workforce Solutions. So um, Heartland Workforce Solutions, a lot of you are already familiar with what we do, but some of you may not be. And so we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we've got going on, as well as this series uh, of um, events that we host on a regular basis. So we try to hold the, host these business workshops on a monthly basis. It's usually the third Thursday of each month at 1 p.m. Um, so thank you for registering today. Um, we're going to be getting out uh, a whole new registration link for this next upcoming year. We've got a lot of great topics. Um, and so we'll be sending that out. So watch for that via email. Um, but yeah, starting in, we're going to take December off, but starting in January, we're going to have a whole new series of, um, of webinars that we do the third Thursday of each month at 1 p.m. And so a little bit about Heartland Workforce Solutions. Uh, Jasmine, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so a little bit about us. Uh, we are the designated entity that receives the federal funds to promote workforce development in uh, three counties. So as you can see, Douglas, Arpy, and Washington counties. Um, you know, our, our mission is really to help both businesses and career seekers um, when it comes to workforce development. So really bridging that gap and, you know, resulting in that economic prosperity. And so we work with all kinds of people, um, all kinds of businesses, all kinds of organizations. Our primary uh, customers are going to be job seekers as well as businesses. And so we receive a lot of funding um, from the federal government as well as from local um, government and foundations to help support those efforts of workforce development, of helping upskill individuals who are in need of, of skill development, helping connect those individuals who are job ready with, with placements uh, there. And so a number of different services offered to businesses. We're um, constantly reaching out to businesses to understand their hiring needs, not only now, but in the future, because as we invest money into individuals uh, for training purposes, we want to make sure that they're, we're aligning uh, those individuals with jobs that are going to be there in the future. And so one of the things that we try to do is develop resources for businesses. And so these workshops are one of many different resources that we have available for businesses. If you haven't already, check out, check out our website um, at hws-ne.org and uh, the employers link there. We've got several resources. We've got specific resources for small businesses um, and entrepreneurs, as well as any business. And one of the great and easy ways to connect with us is through our business registration form. And so if you fill out this form, if you haven't done so already, um, it'll ensure that one of our, um, our business uh, service folks um, from across our, our various programs will reach out to you and, and make sure that you're connected with all of these great services. And there's no cost for you um, to do this. There's no cost for any of our um, programs because again, we are federally funded. Um, and so it's just a fantastic resource for, for businesses that are out there. Huh. And yeah, we've got our newsletter that we launched uh, not too long ago. So if you have not um, seen that, uh, you can scan the QR code there, it'll take you right to it. Um, and if you would like to receive those in the future, make sure to subscribe. Um, I try to include all different kinds of information in there um, for businesses with upcoming job fairs, upcoming workshops, um, all, all kinds of good stuff. So um, yeah, if you are interested in that, uh, go ahead and scan that QR code and it'll take you right to that. Yeah, that was kind of nice. I mean, it just hits your inbox um, once a month and you can see all of the upcoming events, how you can get connected with anything at Heartland Workforce Solutions, um, you know, all of these great free resources. Another way you can also find out about upcoming events and what's going on is connecting with us on social media. Uh, we've got the QR codes here for Facebook, for LinkedIn, as well as for Instagram. 
uh, whatever your preference might be, uh, connect with us there. Uh, lots of great messaging. We're, we're doing um, a lot more than we've done in the past when it comes to promoting things on social media. And so definitely connect with us that way. On our website, as with most websites, at the very top, you can kind of see um, those connecting links to these, these uh, different social media platforms. And so scan the QR code today or connect with us on our on our website and link to those uh, social media platforms that way. But if you want to follow us, uh, you'll, you'll be connected and in the know of what's happening. Yeah, and along with that, you know, we really love to go in and share if you have any job postings or any information that you would like to get out there. Um, I, I love to go in and be able to do that as well. Um, also, we have an ongoing kind of info session that we hold once a month. Um, it's every second Wednesday of each month from 12 to 1. Um, you can scan the QR code there to, uh, it'll lead you to the flyer um, and to the registration for that. It just goes over really what the AJC is, different um, things that we offer, uh, businesses. Um, also, it gives you a good understanding of the different services we have for job seekers. Um, and that way it kind of entails everything that the AJC provides. And as you can see on the picture on your screen, um, this is our location. Uh, we run the, the American Job Center that's located at 5752 Ames Avenue. Uh, we mentioned some free programs and, and services to businesses. Another great feature here is conference room space that we make available for free for, for partnering organizations in our community. Um, we, we regularly host events, career fairs, as Jasmine mentioned, lots of fun things. Um, and again, no cost at all um, because of the fact that we're federally funded and, and locally funded. So uh, a great opportunity there as well as in the future, right, Jasmine? Yeah, so we're really, really excited about our South Omaha office opening soon, hopefully spring. Um, and so this will just be a, an extension of, of the AJC here in, in North Omaha um, and hopefully tailored a little bit to the community in South Omaha. Um, and so we're really, really looking forward to that. Um, and so just keep updated on, on construction and all of that uh, once it starts. Um, and it's going to be really fantastic. It's going to have a coffee shop in there. It's going to be all really cool. Um, they're right there on South 24th Street. It's going to have a, a big impact. And so we're, we're also excited about the upcoming um, Better Business Workshops we'll have for uh, early next year. So some of those topics uh, that we'll start out with, um, and we're still getting the, the dates finalized, but uh, this will all be in that newsletter that Jasmine mentioned. We'll also be sending out an email to anybody that registered this year to get them hopefully register again for the series next year. But some of those topics include, we're talking a little bit about the South Omaha location. Uh, we'll have a topic on DEI in the workplace, um, something related uh, to the Center for Disability and Inclusion, um, something with the, potentially with the Grow Nebraska Women's Business Center, and then an employment discrimination topic as well. Um, other topics that we've covered this year that I think we'll probably bring back include um, definitely one related to labor law. That one is always very popular. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll reach out to the, to the Nebraska Department of Labor and try and get them on board as well to bring that topic back. And as you have ideas for resources and workshops that you'd love us to present, uh, feel free to reach out to either of us and uh, we'll put those together. So um, with that, before we hand it off, to Ashley, we wanted to launch just a couple quick poll questions so we know who is in our audience. And the first one is, is this your first time attending an HWS Better Business Workshop, either yes or no? We're always hoping that there's, you know, some first time folks attending these workshops. And it looks like today we're getting, we've got quite a few people attending for the first time. So that's, All right. that's pretty awesome. Thank you for being here. And hopefully you'll come back again for some future workshops. Um, let me end that poll. And then one more poll related to your industry. Um, and so if you wouldn't mind answering this, uh, in what industry do you work? Um, kind of just find the one that closest resembles the industry. If you can't find um, the right industry, you can click other. Um, but we're just trying to, yeah, figure out how to have a big impact on a lot of these, uh, these great industries that are out there. And um, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, um, 
quite a few people from the nonprofit world manufacturing too. Okay. Good to know. Um, thank you for, for participating in that survey. Um, that definitely helps us with our numbers and um, helps us to identify future programming. So uh, without too much further ado, uh, we have Ashley Drake here from the Nebraska Department of Economic Development to talk about um, the Urban Redevelopment Act and a lot of great funding that is going to be available, um, is available. Um, and so I'm gonna hand it over to, to her um, and let her take it away. All right, get my screen up here. Okay. Oh, and just one more thing before Ashley takes off. I always forget this part, but uh, because we're using the webinar platform for Zoom, um, it's a little tricky to ask questions, but it's easier than you'd think. So at the bottom of your screen, there's a and a um, That's the best way to ask questions. If you just want to plug in any questions as you go that way, other options include putting the question into the chat, or um, there's an option to raise your hand as well, and we can unmute you to ask a question. So definitely feel free to ask questions as we go along. Jasmine and I will monitor the, the, the Q&A as well as the chat to, and make sure that Ashley gets all of those questions. But um, take it away, Ashley. Perfect. I even have questions on the agenda. I'm hoping for some good ones. Um, I'm going to start off just doing a quick introduction, and then I'm going to go over the URA program and our URA website. So the URA program stands for the Urban Redevelopment Act. Um, I'm with Nebraska Department of Economic Development. Um, we opened up a small tax incentives unit and we've partnered with the economic recovery unit. So we're in the state office building downtown Omaha. So Douglas County um, right here downtown, um, we're available. Um, if you want to email us or even we have some people that stop in if that's easier happy to answer questions about the program we have a small team here um, dedicated just to this program um, so our program um, is a tax incentive program i'd like to start out with that it's not a grant program so the credits have to be earned um, what the urban redevelopment act does it's going to allow businesses to earn tax credits for qualified new investment in new full-time equivalent employees this part of this presentation is going to be embedded on our website and i'll show everyone where that's at um, and the exact legal definition of these terms you can click on it these are hyperlinks will take you directly to state statute but essentially um, what we're looking for here for investment is any investment that's made after someone applies for the program. So you sign a new lease, you purchase a building, perhaps you have business fixtures or your computer and office equipment, all those things are going to total up to your minimum investment level. And then for another um, level of the program, you can do an investment and in full-time employee um, option and full-time employees, it's equivalent employees. It doesn't have to be, um, the level requires a minimum of five employees, but doesn't have to be five full-time. It can be a combination of full-time and part-time employees, so long as it um, averages out to five full-time employees. And if one should happen to leave, so long as that employment level is maintained by being replaced, with someone else, that's fine if they've left or been terminated. It's just five full-time employees. Um, to qualify for this program, we do have a section of it that's eligible in Lincoln. Um, and then these circles here, um, the smaller ones Lincoln and the other one shows Omaha. When we go to the website, we have a very interactive map where you can key in an address that's going to tell you if you are in um, one of these shaded zones, whether it's the blue or the yellow shaded zone, you would qualify. Um, so to qualify for the incentives, you have to be in a qualified location of the metropolitan or primary class. So that's only Omaha and Lincoln meet those definitions and be located within an economic redevelopment area. So an economic redevelopment area is an area where the unemployment rate is at least 150% of the statewide average, and the poverty rate is 20% greater. And so those areas um, at the time of applying um, for 2022 have already been identified. To qualify for the tax incentives, um, I had indicated there's two levels. The 
lower threshold here um, on the right side is just an investment option only. Maybe you just are going to open up a retail store. You're not looking to grow your employee levels, or you're just not looking to have five full-time employees. This level to qualify, you would just need to hit $50,000 of investment. And again, that can be cumulative of your lease, um, a new lease, or a lease renewal after you've applied with us. Um, and then fixtures and improvements, um, anything that's put in your property, your business location uh, that's there in that location. Um, the other level is where you have $150,000 of investment and hire at least five new full-time employees. For that level, you're going to get a much higher tax credit. Um, you're going to get $2,750 for each $50,000 you invest. At the first level, you're only going to get $2,500. So you're already starting out just a little bit higher in the tax credit, but you're going to get an additional credit for those employees. You're going to get $3,000 for each employee. So if you have a minimum of five, you're looking at $15,000 in accrued tax credits. And if they happen to live in an economic redevelopment area themselves, there's an optional additional $1,000 credit for those employees. They don't have to live in an economic recovery area or economic redevelopment area, but if they do, again, that's an additional $1,000 per employee. Um, and then just a little side note about employees with times right now with a lot of remote work for the employees um, to count, they have to be working at the business location. So teleworkers that are, if they happen to live maybe adjacent to the business location in that same census tract, that's fine. Otherwise, again, they have to be working on site at the location. So to kind of give you an example of the tax credits that can be earned, um, there's the three, um, there are two levels and there's three examples here. The first one is just if you do the $50,000 of investment, you're going to get back $2,500. That's the tax incentive maximum for a $50,000 investment. But if you do the investment with the five full-time employees, again, you're going to get that higher. Um, you're going to get $2,750 for every $50,000 you invest. Plus you get that $15,000 for the employees. And this is the same level here in the middle. This just shows an example of, let's say you have three employees that live in an economic recovery area and it can be any economic recovery area. It doesn't have to be the same one as the business. It can be any of those shaded regions on the map. So let's say you have three of them that live in, in an economic um, redevelopment area. You're gonna get that a bonus $1,000 per employee so you're going to get back $26,250 in tax incentive credits. Some key program dates and how it works. Let's say you don't have the $50,000 right up front. Um, you have um, what we call the ramp up period. You have until the end of your second full tax year to meet the investment and employment levels. So again, you get that time to ramp up. If you hit it sooner, that's great. If it takes you the full two years, that's fine. Once you qualify, then you're going to move down into your performance period. And so once you've hit that investment or the levels of employment, you do have to maintain them until the end of the third tax year. Um, if you don't, there are provisions that you may have to pay back a portion of the tax credits that have been issued to you. Um, and there's, again, it's a percentage basis. Um, so you do want to maintain the employment and the investment levels for at least three tax years after meeting them. Um, so we talked about these tax credits that you can earn. Um, here's how you can redeem them. You can get a refund of your sales and use taxes, a refundable income tax credit on the taxpayer's income tax return. You can reduce the taxpayer's income tax withholding for the employer or the payer tax liability. And if you happen to make a purchase, you can request repayment of real property taxes paid at the county level. So again, you do have to pay those property taxes up front, but you can request that they be refunded to you. Um, and in this PowerPoint, we have a little link down at the bottom 
to take you to Nebraska Department of Revenue. They are developing the form that's going to be filed to obtain these tax credits. I don't think it's been released on their website just yet, um, but again, there will be a little hyperlink there to see that. Um, some other little limitations or exclusions. Um, if you are participating in another tax incentive program, perhaps you've heard of the Imagine program. It's a much larger program. It has a $5,000 application fee and a minimum of um, approximately a million dollars of investment. Kind of depends on the industry you're in. There's different um, employee and investment thresholds for that program. But if you're participating in that or any other incentive program, you cannot participate in the Urban Redevelopment Act program also. Um, the employees, if you're um, seeking to apply at the employment and investment level, your employees have to be paid at least 70% of the Nebraska hourly wage. So right now, that is $17.31 if you apply in 2022. It does go up a little bit for 2013 to $18.13. Um, but again, it's based on the year that you apply. So if you apply in November and December, you're locked in at that $17.31 an hour. Full-time employees, if you do the employment and investment level, can be added um, throughout the application year. So if you apply tomorrow, any employees that you have hired from January 1st through your application date count. It's just the investment dollars do not begin until after you apply. So if you are seeking funding for a lease or you're gonna make a purchase, um, I think we had some manufacturing um, people in the audience today, if you're gonna purchase some equipment, you definitely want to do your application with us first and then make that purchase so that the investment counts because it'll be after the application date. And then we do have a minimum threshold of $2,500 is what you would get at the $50,000 if you qualify and have that $50,000 of investment. But the maximum is $50,000 per business. Um, so for businesses that are interested in applying, um, there is a $500 application fee. Just want to share that up front. Um, so there's an application process. We take up to 90 days to get an agreement back out to you. Um, but it doesn't, you're not sitting waiting for us to approve it for 90 days. The qualifier for businesses is the date of the application. So again, as soon as you apply, then you can begin your investment. You don't have to wait um, on that agreement. Um, and it's open to all industries. There's not an exclusion if you're retail or you want to open up an office space or you want to do a daycare center. Um, it's open to all different industries. And then because we are partnering with Department of Revenue, um, there is an option you can certify your employment levels. So what Department of Revenue would do is they would say for 2021, they would go through and look at your W-2s. How many employees did you have in 2021? And they would give you a number. And then that would be from that number on is you would need to hit five more full-time employee equivalents. So that's an optional process you can do on the front end just to have your numbers kind of locked in. Um, so to kind of summarize the program, you would just qualify, you'd submit your application and your program fee online. And I'll show you again the website. We're going to jump there um, in a minute. Um, so where to make that payment and submit the application. It probably takes five, 10 minutes or so um, if you know your tax ID and numbers up front. Once you uh, make your investment, you want to just maintain it um, and you'll earn up to $50,000 in the refundable tax credits that you can then choose how you want to use them with the Department of Revenue. Our team email is listed here. So it's ded.ura at nebraska.gov. And I also have a hyperlink here um, to go directly to our website. Uh, and so we are actually going to follow that. Okay, so when we go to the URA website, 
uh, we have a lot of resources, a lot of information out here, but we have some nice buttons here that you can just click on to get to the primary sources of information. We have a one page flyer here, um, just kind of summarizes a lot of what I said in a simple one page document. Maybe you want to share this with somebody else. That is a good way um, to access that. And then I'm going to go, this program information is a modified version of some of the information I've been covering today. Um, and again, it's equipped with those hyperlinks to state statute. So if you really want to dig into the law and know exactly full-time equivalent employees, this is the resource that you're going to want to access to do so. Hey, Ashley, it's still showing the PowerPoint for me. Um, oh, not the let me... You have to like stop sharing and then reshare or something. I don't. Okay, let me. Okay, how about this? Do we have a DD website showing? Now it's working. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so this is actually our main um, agency homepage. So the URA program is embedded under the programs and the incentives division. So if this program isn't for you, there might actually be some other programs you might want to check out on this page. Um, URA is just housed right there in the middle. Um, and so from here's the resources I had mentioned. We've got a, like a one page flyer here. And then let's see, we're going to go. Um, the modified version of the PowerPoint presentation is just a PDF here, but it's going to have all those hyperlinks and definitions, take it to state statutes. Um, all of that's here. And then the maps and our frequently asked questions. So when you click on the maps, it's going to drop you down to these interactive maps. So we can look at an address here. Got to move our faces over just a second. Sorry, guys. I was hiding my search field. Okay, so if we do 5700 Ames Avenue, it's going to drop us down and you see that it's in a shaded area. Um, so again, either shaded area is fine. It's just there are different um, federal opportunities based on if you are in an opportunity zone or not. Um, but to qualify for this program, it doesn't matter if it is the pink or the purple, or I'm sorry, pink or the blue. Um, but so Heartland Workforce Solutions would be right here on this block. And so that would be a qualifying economic um, redevelopment area. And then down below, we also have a map for Lincoln. Um, again, there's the little search box here. So you can key in an address. Um, and type that in, or you, if you know where you're going, you can just kind of zoom in and drag the map and see, oh, okay. So before you sign a lease, maybe you want to look at these maps over or work um, with your leasing agent. And then we have some frequently asked questions. A lot of them I have covered. I don't know if anybody has sent anything into the chat, um, but we break them down by category here. So um, I gave kind of a fast overview of what's an employee or an economic redevelopment area, but some of those definitions are all defined here. And again, it's broken down by topic, like how do I earn it? Or, you know, I, how do I use them? What am I going to do with these credits? Um, so all of that is identified on the website. So... And then last but not least, we've got um, some more um, literature down here. So everything you can look at, um, oh, if you didn't wanna click on the icon, we have everything listed down here. Um, you can go through, if you wanna have your accountant to work on this for you, you can fill out a power of attorney form, give them permission to talk to us. Um, we have a calculator. So I'd shown an example of, the investment, if you want to, you know, type in to see, okay, I want to do $100,000 or $150,000, what am I actually going to earn? We have that calculator out there. So you can kind of check that out and see. Um, 
Another helpful piece of information is the supply section. So when you apply, uh, you're going to want to know your tax ID because that's you're going to sign up, you know, as your business, but you're also going to need to know your census tract and you're going to need to know your parcel number. So on this before you apply sheet, there are links that make that much easier for you. You can it'll take you directly to the Douglas County Property Assessor so that you can find that. Um, and if you don't already have a tax ID and you want to get started on the process, we do have a link here to the Department of Revenue's form so you can get that application in. And then the census tract, um, you can look up um, the census tract um, by keying in an address, and it'll give you that four digits. Usually it's two digits followed by a period, another two digits. And then um, as far as doing the application, you're going to go on and do um, an application. You're going to create an account and do so. And then in that same section, we have the option you can pay online or you can pay in person. Um, you can mail in a payment at, to the downtown Omaha office as well. Um, I do encourage anyone that's considering applying to reach out to us um, and work with a program consultant. Um, just to make sure that your area qualifies and is eligible. We don't want you to pay that money up front and then you don't qualify. Um, we also want to make sure we have you authorize the correct amount of investment. So when you apply, your agreement is going to define a maximum amount of tax credits based on how much you anticipate your investment to be. So if you think you might hit $75,000 of investment, we might encourage you to just go ahead and go and say $100,000 instead of saying $50,000. If you identify your investment at 50,000, then you're gonna be capped at that $2,500 for $50,000 of investment. That's your maximum. So we don't, we don't wanna limit you. We wanna make sure you estimate high. So sometimes it helps to just talk through that with us to make sure you don't miss out on any tax incentive credits you may be eligible for. Okay. And Jasmine, I just saw your chat. Is everything showing up okay? Yes, yeah, yeah okay. you got it. Perfect. All right, um, so that is just a quick kind of fast overview. The program began accepting applications August 1st. We have up to $8 million. We're working on giving away in tax incentive credits. Um, again, we got a whole team here in downtown Omaha office dedicated to this. Um, so we're looking um, forward to seeing applications come in. Um, and working with the business community um, in Omaha and Lincoln. Yeah, so as, as folks have um, questions, feel free to put those in the Q&A or the chat. Um, I'll, I'll ask a couple of questions just to get started here. And again, thank you, Ashley, for, for being here and, and um, presenting and providing information on this, this great program. Um, so you mentioned it, it hasn't been around for very long. Could you talk a little bit about um, the, the first off, like the popularity so far, the reception that's being received? And then I'm also curious too, with like new programs like this, what, what sparked the program into being? If you, if you kind of could talk a little bit about how, how this program came into being and, and uh, whether it was you're looking at other states and develop the program based off of somewhere else or, or, or any of that, so. Okay, so there's a lot going on with economic development right now. Um, they have a very robust economic recovery team. Um, and sometimes I even have to stop myself because I keep saying instead of urban redevelopment, uh, I want to say urban recovery because there's so much going on in recovery. So with COVID, um, just things have changed and the legislature has identified that there is money and resources needed, particularly in these areas. So they want to put the money there to grow businesses because it's just gonna improve the neighborhood and the communities. It's gonna create new job opportunities. That's why they don't want teleworking. They want the employees on site because they wanna bring people in and kind of revitalize some of these areas um, and grow them. Um, so that's like the, Department of Economic Development's you know, big um, challenge is how do we grow Nebraska? 
Um, and so right now, this program specifically is wanting to um, improve um, or grow um, certain census tracts, you know, help those unemployment numbers and poverty rates get more in line with the rest of the state. And so um, the reception so far, uh, have, are you seeing a lot of applications? Yeah, I, well, I, I'd like to see more. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, it, it is new um, and it is targeted. The Imagine program is so robust. Um, it's another incentive program that's been a while around a while. But again, you've got to have a million dollars in investment. It's a $5,000 application fee. Um, in this program, it's much lower application fee, much lower investment minimums. But I don't know if we're not hitting our target audiences. You know, how are we reaching these smaller businesses and letting them know that this exists? And then how do we catch them before they sign that lease? Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for allowing us to be here today and reach out and kind of just share um, with the community here. Um, because maybe, you know, it's somebody you have in a neighboring county and they want to expand to Douglas County, this might make that option more affordable to them so they can open up a second location um, in one of these economic redevelopment areas. Um, and they know they have those tax incentive credits coming to them for later on to use. Um, so we have quite a bit of the money left to allocate. So please um, do apply and um, I, I wouldn't worry about rushing to get your application in and running out of money. I would just worry more about make sure you rush and get that application in before you make that investment because you want all those dollars to count up so that you get um, the maximum tax of incentive credit that you can get. Um, that's, that's awesome. And I think it's fantastic that you have the consultants there that are available to help out. Could you talk a little bit about more about what the role of those consultants are and how much they're able to, to assist businesses? Okay, so the consultants are overviewing um, the email box. So it's a great, um, you send in an email, it's gonna go to a team box. They're dividing out those inquiries. Um, we did a press release in August and that we had some chatter coming in from that um, when we launched the website. Um, so the consultants are doing that. And then when an application comes in, there's a consultant assigned to it. And they are going to be the uh, main agency contact that it's going to work on getting the agreement um, to the business to sign. And we use DocuSign, so we don't require anybody to come in. We can do everything electronically. Um, and then um, we'll also then forward that agreement to our director to sign. And then acts as the liaison in, with Department of Revenue, because we're looping them in and letting them know, hey, this business, this tax ID has applied. Um, here's the application. Um, make sure there's no other tax incentive credits so that there's no duplication of funds. And um, so those, the consultants are there um, working on that. Um, and then we have a, a designated program attorney who I think is in the audience today, um, making sure I'm factual. And um, so if you have questions about the program, please uh, do feel free to reach out in person um, or send that email. We, again, have a whole team that'll get back to you pretty quickly. I do have one question. Um, so do you have team members that are able to assist Spanish speaking or any other language um, that's not English? We do actually in our office, um, we do have a number of multiple um, bilingual um, consultants. Some of them are assigned to other programs, but are available and would be willing to help out. Um, we are partnering with um, a marketing firm. I, I don't know for sure if their contract has been signed yet, but they are working at translating everything for us in Spanish. But we do have two Spanish speaking persons um, and then a gentleman that speaks French and another one that speaks German here in the office. So we um, have a couple different languages in person or and we can do a phone conference if that's easier if you need help um, translating those documents. All right. 
Well, I mean, we've we've got all kinds of people attending, a pretty good turnout of folks, but we're not getting a lot of questions. I think you must have presented everything so clearly that there's no need for additional questions. I, um, okay. So just, I guess, just a, a couple things. The PowerPoint's available on your website, it looks yes. like. Um, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll get you a copy of this video so you can check it out and um, make sure it's okay for us to post on our website. Um, uh, typically, that's what we'll do with these business workshops. So we'll get your permission on that um, if you want to review that. But um, we'll try to promote the program as well and, and get the word out. Um, if there's any final questions from anyone in the audience, uh, now's the time to submit those. But I'm not seeing any others roll in. Um, any final thoughts, Ashley? Well, um, to Kat Connolly and everyone, thank you for having me and being here this afternoon. Um, again, our team email is at ded.ura at nebraska.gov. So if you want to follow up privately, you know, just reach out to us. I'm very happy to be here. So thank you. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. This has been extremely helpful. And uh, thank you for giving us some of your time and, and helping us learn about this program. So. For everybody else, uh, join us here in January. We'll be getting more information out to you um, about upcoming business workshops. And, and thank you for joining us today.